Hi, this is Lead Pastor Clayton Beck of the Well Community Church. I'm so glad you've joined us to listen to this message. Listen, it's my prayer and hope that you hear the encouraging truth God has for you in His Word today. All right, uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun out of, out of this one. Some good instruction in God's Word. Before we get there, you may have seen, I think it was on Fox News, it might have been on some of your social media stream, but there was this lady who was getting married, and she wanted a dream wedding, right? Everyone wants a dream wedding. Uh, she's been kind of labeled the uh, bridezilla, so some of you may have already seen this or read it. Maybe you haven't, but she decided because her and her fiance went to a psychic and the psychic told them instead of having a low budget wedding you ought to have a big budget wedding so they said well why not the psychic says to do it so they planned a wedding sixty thousand dollars it included their honeymoon to aruba and all i mean it was top of the line and i say top of the line because only uh there were very few that were invited but here's the caveat. Anybody who was invited was required to write them a check for $1,500 to pay for the $60,000 wedding. Unfortunately, now this blows me away, only eight of the invited did. I'm blown away that eight did. But still, so in a tirade rant, Four days before the wedding, she posts on Facebook. I'm going to read some of this to you because it's just so hilarious. It comes with great sadness that I'm announcing the cancellation of the wedding. I apologize for canceling only four days beforehand. We know the lady's name Susan. That's all I know. Um, our dream wedding amounts to 60000 All included flights to Aruba. All we asked for was a little help from our friends and family to make it happen. The 17 paragraph outbursts, 17 paragraphs, she just rants. She was probably drunk, just so you know. Said that the pair specifically asked for cash gifts from guests. She goes on to write, how could we have our wedding that we dreamed of without proper funding? We sacrificed so much and only asked each guest for 1500 the bride also explained she made it clear if you couldn't contribute, you weren't invited to our exclusive wedding. It's a once in a lifetime party. So, uh, listen to this. The enraged woman then wrote that she took out her frustrations on her maid of honor who had promised her $5,000 before backing out. I wonder if that's how she got picked to be the maid of honor. You know, who's going to front that much money? So there was all this, this rant going on, and a lot of people reading were like, come on, this is too much. It's too over the top. This can't be, you know, this is fake news on social media, right? We can't can believe anything. This can't be a real person. Um, someone wrote back, yes, this is a living, breathing human being. This is her cousin that is writing this. Uh, clearly, she has entitlement issues. I've known her. Uh, I've never known her to be this obnoxious. Uh, the bride's cousin called out social media and her family members' obsession with Kardashian stuff over the past few years as the cause for the meltdown. The cousin also felt the post may have again been written because she was probably drinking at the time. So, anyway, 60 grand, but she's not getting her wedding. And so, not only did they cancel the wedding, but him and her and the uh, groom broke up because of the whole fiasco. Oh. And so, she's got nothing now, all right? nothing so uh, uh that story's bizarre but you know i hate to say it some of you know i, I kind of feel like sometimes that's kind of like the world we live in you know i'm not shocked by it <laughs> um we've got this world of entitlement i'm going to give you a definition it says the belief that one is inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment it's the world of me and i and i want i need i deserve I'm entitled to. How many times have you had somebody say, I'm entitled to, right? Well, guess what? The Bible has a lot to say about entitlement and work. We're going to talk about work in honor of Labor Day. 
And so let me give you some verses before we get to the main uh, crux here. Uh, the Bible says this, Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. You ever work with somebody that's all talk, but not a lot of action, right? Um, a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. That's a pretty hard verse, <coughs> harsh verse. Proverbs 12, 11, a hard worker has plenty of food, but a person who chases fantasies has no sense. Ever you got somebody got their head in the cloud all the time? Now, God's not against the dreamers, but God's all for you chasing his dream, not your own fantasy, senseless dream, right? Um, and then Proverbs 13, 4, lazy people want much but get little. Those who work hard will prosper. Lazy people want much but get little. Don't you always know that it's kind of like, you know, if you work with somebody that it's always the, the one that doesn't do hardly anything that their will squeaks the most. You know what I mean? They're the complainer. They're the griper. They're the one that wants all the attention, but they're not doing all the work, are they? So they spend all their time griping and complaining. Um, now listen, I, I'm no different than any of you. I'm not saying I look forward to work. We hear that word work and we don't like it. It doesn't matter if it's what work it is, school work, whatever it is. Even our kids, I'm sure, can attest that going to school Tuesday, the, I mean, the thrill's over, right? You made it through the first week. The fun's over. So those couple of days where teachers are getting to know you and you're, you're doing the little cards of, oh, what's your name? What's your favorite color? All those things. That's all. The getting to know you's over. Now it's, you didn't have this, Elise? So look at me like, okay, I didn't have it. Anyway, the work's going to start. Sorry, you missed out. <laughs> You're taking the wrong classes, evidently. So. <laughs> most of you, you know, not this Monday, most of you are going to be off tomorrow, which is awesome. But most Mondays or every other day of the week, you'd rather be singing Everybody's Working for the Weekend rather than, you know, hi-ho, hi-ho. It's off to work, we go, right? You know, um, I can't whistle. I can't do the little whistling part, but... Uh, uh, you, know, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, you know how it goes. Do you know how it goes? Do you guys know the lyrics to Hi Ho? Some of you, Karen, your shit, you know the lyrics. Some of them? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them to you. And I'm not, I wish I would have worked on this a little more because it, it kind of can form a little rap. But I'm just, I'm going to give it to you because I hadn't heard these in a while. But where else would you get it but here today, all right? Well, we dig, dig, dig. Well, we dig in our mind the whole day through. Dig, 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 that's what we like to do. And it ain't no trick to get rich quick if you dig, dig, dig with a shovel and a pick. Dig, dig, dig the whole day through. Got to dig, 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 it's what we like to do. In our mind, in our mind, we're a million diamond shine. There's part of it, all right? <laughs> None of you, I guarantee you, leaves your house or wherever, off to work, thinking, awesome, hi ho, dig, 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 <laughs> right? What's wrong with those little guys, right? None of us are like that. Um, so what do we do about this thing called work? Yeah, you know, let's be honest. You and I, for the most part, we hate work. Doesn't matter what work it is. You know, whether it's job work or housework or yard work or busy work, whatever the work, school work, whatever it is, we don't like work. We don't like it. But the Bible talks a lot about it. And the Bible seems to be in much favor of it. So what do we need to understand about work and how do we have the right attitude about it or change your attitude about it? I'm going to give you three things, all right? Let me give it to you right off the bat, these three things, and then we'll give you some verses and everything, all right? Bible says, or, or I should say the points are your work's from the Lord, your work is for the Lord, and your work testifies of the Lord, gives glory to the Lord. So we'll break this down. Uh, the first one, your work's from the Lord. Work is, we'll go, we'll hit the uh, next thing here. All right, this is where I should have been doing all the intro on this slide for the background. Uh, work is a God thing, all right? Think about this. God put Adam and Eve in the garden to tend the garden before sin happened, before they fell, before they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they weren't supposed to eat of God told them when he created them and put them in the garden tend the garden so work you can't say well works just a result of sin because it's actually not it's a 
actual thing God created for man and woman to do before sin even entered the world. You and I in heaven where there won't be sin, God will have work for us to do. All right? Um, God told Noah to build an ark, not here's the ark. <laughs> no, you go work, build it. It's going to take you 100 years, but go, go to work, build the ark. God told Moses in the giving of the Ten Commandments. Now listen, don't tell any of your employers this one I'm about to tell you, but in the literal breakdown of the Ten Commandments, one of the things it talks about, about keeping the Sabbath day holy, within that part, it says that God gives you six days to work. <laughs> so we get stressed over our 40-hour, five days a week work, right? God actually says six days to work. Keep the seventh day, the Sabbath, holy. All right? God throughout all Scripture has used people, skilled trade, non-skilled trade, talent, no talent. Uh, God's used, I'm going to give you just a, a list here, uh, skilled craftsmen, building the tabernacle, the temple. He had people that were, were skilled in, in leather work, that wood work, in gold and all that kinds of stuff. He's used farmers, vineyard keepers, ranchers, sheep herders. Soldiers for warfare, boat builders, fishermen, metal fabricators, blacksmiths, chefs, bakers, tent makers, kings, leaders. I could keep going, but you get the idea. But look at our verse here in Ephesians. Ephesians 4.28. Use your hands for good, hard work. Listen, as a believer, we have to understand work is from the Lord. And you should... Use your hands for good, hard work. Now, it doesn't mean that has to be just physical labor. You can use your minds. Again, this isn't just a blue-collar verse. This is blue-collar, white-collar, but it's basically the principle is you need to work. You need to work. God wants you to work. He wants you to work hard. He expects you to work. And then Paul gave us instructions, 2 Thessalonians 3.10, those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Is that the society you and I live in? No. Even Rebecca knows that is not the world we live in. You don't have to. Let, you and we won't, don't need to go into to this tirade here because it's not a point at all. But you and I know that a lot of people don't do a thing, but they know how to work what? The system. And you and I as taxpayers, we pay for that. We go work. So we try to support ourselves and others who aren't willing to work, right? Now, I'm not talking about there are people physically unable, you know, we're not talking about that. We're, you know what I'm talking about. The people that know how to work the system, right? God says you need to work. Work is of the Lord. And listen, work is for the Lord. Listen real closely here, Colossians 3.23. Work willingly at whatever you do. Uh, you may not realize this, but God is not concerned about what it is you do. Now, yes, he cares. But as I'm going to go through this, God is more concerned about how you do what you do rather than what it is that you do. Now, that's within reason, right? Your job can't dishonor him. I'm not going to go into jobs you could have that dishonor him, but you know what I'm talking about. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Guess what? You don't work for an earthly boss. You don't work for an earthly company. You don't even work for a paycheck. You work for the Lord. He is your boss employer. He is your kingdom company and he gives you whatever it is he wants to give you as far as blessings and provision and you know you and i we get twisted in our thought because we don't often think that way right we just you know we try and a lot of you guys are especially i shouldn't say better at this we're probably worse about this we compartmentalize things so there's work and then there's everything else right but even you ladies you know what i mean you you, you know, you kind of segment that stuff, but that's not how God designed it. It's all one. Because again, he's concerned about how you do what you do, not what it is that you do. Meaning he doesn't care if you're the employer or the peon. He's concerned about how you do what you do. 
because again, works from him and it's for him. Um, because you work for the Lord, then you got to stop and ask yourself every day, is he happy with my work? Is he happy with my performance, my effort, my accomplishment? Is, you know, is what I'm doing, again, doesn't matter if it's at school, doesn't matter if it's at the job, doesn't matter where it is, is he happy with what I'm doing, right? And that's important for us to remember because we forget that we work for him. We do. We work for him. And then listen, your work testifies of your Lord. It gives glory to the Lord. Look at this next verse here. Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. No one... As we talked about earlier, like somebody that's lazy, nobody likes a slacker. No one listens to a slacker other than other slackers. Um, re people respect you as a good worker. I have, a, it's always been frustrating for me. I, I've worked different jobs before where I've worked among people who said they're believers and I'm just like, there's no way they are because they're the worst complainer you know, they're just horrible, and I cringe sometimes because I'm like, great. You're telling everybody you're a Christian, and you're the worst person on the planet. You know, and here I am, I'm saying the same thing, and I've got, you know, I always get worried they're going to lump me with you, you know. Um, listen, God wants people to see our good deeds because, again, that reflects uh, on him because we're one of his. Um, not in a not in a showy way, but a humble way, right? So you know, do the job, do it right, do it honestly, uh, do it with integrity, and and do it with all that you have. You know, be good at what you do. There's nothing wrong with that. That honors God. It honors God. Um, I had a it's just a little side tangent here. It was kind of cool. Uh, one day this. Past week, I can't remember what day it was, but I, uh, you know, I meet a lot of people because I do a lot of traveling and everything. And um, uh, this one company I've been working uh, uh, through, um, I've spent a lot of time with, and they know I'm a pastor and uh, all those kinds of things. But um, on my way, I had to travel a couple hours to meet up with one of them, and we were going to go to another meeting. And um, I, uh, I just, boy, I just felt God really prompting me with some verses about salvation and stuff. So I was just going through those verses in my mind and everything. And and lo and behold, we we ended up, um, I ended up getting in his vehicle, and we traveled, and we had about a half hour or so of just riding around. And it was just one of those things where, man, God just opened up the door for me to be able to share the gospel with him. And so it was kind of neat. I was sitting there like, okay, God, you knew this was going to happen because you already have me prepared for it. And so I started going through all those verses. And I'm not going to, you know, that person, I'm not going to tell you they got saved. But boy, a door was open. And they, you could just see, they were listening to everything about it. And they were asking me questions. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, here, it, and, and what I should have said is I was dreading this whole thing. I was dreading the drive there. I was dreading the day, all this kind of stuff. And it completely turned the day around because I'm like, wow, God had something completely different in mind than what I had. Because, you know, here I am working in what's at times, uh, don't tell Dave this, <laughs> I think is not important because it's not ministry type stuff, right? And yet God uses that for his glory. It's no different than any job you have or, again, at school. People are watching you, right? You, you may not even realize that they are. And so, again, as the verse says, let your good deeds shine out for all who see so that everyone will praise who? You? No, your Heavenly Father. When you do what you're supposed to do, honoring God, guess what? People see that, and they're drawn to Him as a result of it. So... Don't think your life is wasting away at work. Because that's how you and I feel at times, right? Our life is wasting away these 8, 10, 12-hour days. God's using that. You just may not see it. Um, 
I've got a definition of you for work. Work is actively involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. But God's got a definition because, again, he's not concerned about what we do, but how we do it. And that reflects on who we are in him and, again, the glory that we give to him, right, for his purpose and result to be done. So your work's from the Lord, your work's for the Lord, your work testifies of the Lord. And I'm going to give you just a little extra credit thing here, all right? And we'll still be done early, all right? Um, the extra credit is you and I with work, doesn't matter what your job, again, school, whatever the work is, um, there are times we get stressed or overwhelmed because of work, right? Pro I mean, that's just part of it. That's one of the reasons why we don't like work, okay? Um, how do you and I keep from letting stress at the workplace get to us, overwhelm us, again, stress us out? It doesn't matter if you punch a clock or your salary or, again, you're in school, whatever it is. Um, you take those overwhelming feelings home and you carry them with them, right? I've always heard, you know, um, you know, me and Rebecca, we both were sometimes unfortunate since we're salary. And we always, we talk about, man, it'd be nice just to punch a clock, right? Some of you have, I've punched a clock before, some of you punch a clock before, but the truth is, even if you punch a clock, you still carry it home with you, right? You think it ends when you punch the clock out, but it doesn't, because you carry on what happened in the day, what, you know, what somebody said, what somebody shouldn't have said, what somebody did, or what you did, what you shouldn't have done, or whatever it is, you still carry it home, and that stuff can be overwhelming. How do you not let that stuff get to you? Let me give you something. It's going to be pretty simple here. Three things. First off, get away, release, and relax. Listen, if you're working a job, take your break take your lunch, and take your time off. Now, that may sound simple, but listen, I know a lot of people that work through their break, work through their lunch, and they won't turn the phone or email off at night, you know? Listen, you have to take your time away. Because what happens is you're going to get burnt out if you do it that way. And you think, well, I just I want to do a good job. I want to get it done so I can relax later. Well, what if I could prove to you through the Bible that you're supposed to take your break, take your lunch, and turn it off at night? What if I could prove it? I'm going to give you a verse. I don't have it up here, but if you want to write this one down, you can use it on your boss or whoever, uh, superintendent, whoever it is you need to use it for, all right? Mark 6, 31. Just listen to this verse. Then Jesus said, so we got Jesus, all right? He's going to prove it right here. So I think we can trust him. He's talking to the disciples and he says, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So you understand what's going on? Jesus was in a crowd of people healing them and preaching the gospel. Jesus Christ doing ministry stuff. Real work, right? And he comes to time and he says, hey guys, I see how hard you're working Let's go take a break. Let's get off to ourselves. Let's eat. Let's rest. So what's he, what happens? If he does that, then he's doing what? He's going to stop healing people momentarily, and he's going to stop sharing the gospel momentarily. Jesus Christ. Do you understand how he understands how important it is for you to release and relax? You've got to release and relax. Listen, on your break, on your lunch or something, read God's Word. Take that break. All right? Um, oh, I won't even go into that. I won't go into smoker breaks. But listen, <laughs> right? When they go take their smoker break, you take a break too. <laughs> read your Bible. All right? You know, take your breaks. I can't stress enough, people. Take your breaks. The work will be there. I promise you. The work will be there. One little trick I found, it really seems silly, but um, maybe this works more for melancholy, but if you've got stuff that's piling up for the next day, just write your little to-do list at the end of the day for what you've got to do tomorrow. What tends to happen is when you get it, they say when you get it down on paper, it's easy for you to kind of walk away. You're not sitting there thinking about it. 
If you continually think about what I got to do the next day, you tend to carry it with you. So if you get into the habit, I'm going to write it down. I don't have to think about it now because my list will be there for me in the morning. All right. It, it, it honestly will help you. All right. But listen, take your time. Take your time away. Take your vacation. And again, when you get home, if you get off at five, shut the email off. Shut the work phone off. And you say, well, my boss won't let me. Train them. Right? Train them. Believe me, I, I have, not with my boss, but I, with, I get people that email me and call me for work things all the time. I don't respond. They know after five, they're not going to get a hold of me for, for work stuff. <laughs> Ministry stuff 24-7. <laughs> all right? Look to God for hope and peace. Set your mind on him. Give you some verses here. Uh, Romans 15, 33. Now may God who gives us peace be with you all. You know what? God gives peace. God gives peace. When you set your mind on the problems at work, the problems at school, that's where your mind is. When you set your mind on the God of peace, then guess what? God gives you peace. He's the only one that can give peace. Uh, Romans 8, 6. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Why do you and I stress over things that, number one, we usually don't have any control over? Number two, let's be honest, they will work themselves out. Because <laughs> it's just stuff. Most of it is not anything important. It's definitely not stuff eternal in that regard. It'll figure itself out. And, you know, just give it to God. Put your mind on Him and let Him figure that stuff out. Listen, people, I... I have things all the time that I come through during the week that, man, I just, it's like, I've done all I do. i got to pray. This thing's about to blow up in my face, <laughs> and I need God's help. And you know what? That God always comes through. Always comes through. Um, Proverbs 12, 25, worry weighs a person down, and encouraging word cheers a person up. When, you, when the work stress starts getting to you, the school stress, whatever it is, Listen, just take some time, read God's Word. I promise you His Word will cheer you up. It will put things into perspective. All right? Third thing here is just simply pray. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Give all your worries and cares to God, He cares about you. Listen, God cares about how you go about doing what it is you do. He does care. And because God says, you know, let your, let your work shine and, you know, put your hands to hard work, works from God. It's of Him. It's for Him. It gives Him glory. So do you not think God won't help you with your work, whatever it is? He will. He will. But you've got to give it to Him. Again, what you and I tend to do is we tend to stress first and pray later. You need to switch that. You need to pray first and then not stress at all. <laughs> right? Just leave it. God's got this. I gave it to God. I'm walking away. And then he'll tell me how it all plays out. Right? That's how you handle that. In conclusion, Solomon wrote about work. This is Ecclesiastes 3, 12, and 13. He simply said people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor for these are gifts from God. You probably never thought that work was a gift from God. <laughs> but it is. As long as you and I see it in the right perspective of how God uses it. Listen, bottom line is this week, and it's I've known this, but I always get reminded of it. Have I not work a earthly job, you want to call it that, I would not come in contact with a lot of the people I come in contact with. I meet people all over the state because I travel all over the state. Um, that wouldn't happen if I didn't have the opportunity that has been given to me that I've been blessed with. I don't wake up every day going, let's dig, 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 dig. It's what I like to do, right? <laughs> but it ought to be if I have it in the right perspective of how, how I should expect God to use me. Connect me with people that I'd never get connected with. No different than you guys. Doesn't matter. You don't have to travel or anything like that. You work 
for a lot of reasons. You work because it's of God. You work because it's for God. You work because it gives glory to God. So go and do your work. He expects it. He wants you to do it. And he gets the glory for it. And you will be shocked and amazed how God will use you when you do it with the right kind of attitude, right? Right kind of attitude. Hey, it's Pastor Clayton again. I hope you were both challenged and encouraged by today's message. I want to invite you to come to the well. You can also visit us online at the-well-church.com. And you can find us on Facebook. Until next time, remember that God's Word is the truth that you need today. For a blink of